Welcome to PsychoNet presents your home for all things Psycho. This is Tanya Muller. Today we're going to talk about Shatter, the world's first completely computer-generated comic book. By First Comics, we'll talk about First in a little bit more detail in another episode, but today we're going to focus exclusively on Shatter. So Shatter was done by Peter Gillis and Mike Sens, and was done completely on a uh, what the first Macintosh computer that was ever made. So an interesting process. Um, Mike Sens had to actually use a mouse <laughs> to create this comic and the monitors back then were so small he could really only cover about two-thirds of the page at the time. So um, this was drawn completely on that original Macintosh um, system and was stored on 800k floppy disks so uh, very interesting take he did print out the pages and then uh, colored the rest of them by hand he did some other coloring work I believe for John Sable pretty interesting cover this is actually signed by the editor Mike Gold who kind of gives a lowdown of everything here in the very beginning so and just lays out how um, interesting and innovative technology has become and uh, it sounds like to me I did a little research but I I didn't come across anything tangible but he does kind of tout in here that this is the best advertisement one could ever have for the new Macintosh new as in in 1985 this did appear first as a small segment in a British computer magazine, I think in March 1985. This came out in June, so this is really the full, first full-fledged computerized comic book. Kind of goes into detail about Mike Sands and Peter Gillis as well. Mike Sands started in Epic Illustrated, um, which was kind of a creator-owned, sort of almost heavy metal-esque magazine that Marvel put out in, in the early 80s. And then I think after this, he left. Um, he ended up doing some backup features of this in John Sable, and then Shatter ended up having its own regular series, and then he left after issue three. Tried to start his own company, and it was all focused on creating comic books digitally and so he ended up creating a few uh, other comic books that are worth taking a look at in the near future and Peter Gillis was a writer who uh, had stuff all over the place uh, he did a little bit of Micronauts, Defenders, What If, The Eternals so on and so forth so this is a, totally a cyberpunk story it's got um, whiffs of Blade Runner, a uh, little bit of William Gibson's Neuromancer, a little bit of Total Recall, so on and so forth. So it's in a very dystopian technological future. Flying cars, of course, because you got to have that. It's not a future without flying cars. And uh, economically, it's very interesting because all of the jobs are temporary, even being a policeman. So our main character... Um, who is, for some reason, the the naming of the main character is very weird. They, may, they goes through quite a few pages to note the fact that he's known as Jack Scratch, but his real name is Sadir Al Sadir Al Din Morales. So it's like a mix between Arabic and um, Hispanic, but then but also just goes by Shatter. So, um, it I, I found that particular piece pretty odd and didn't really understand the point of all that. But anyway, so he in this world you uh, go online or at least to some sort of a network. It doesn't seem to be any semblance of any kind of internet, but all of these other networks that you even have to travel to um, to get connected. Uh, and but the particular network that he has connected at home is the ability for contractors to be able to make bids, like police contractors. There are there's no state police; they're all temp private contractors to make bids on uh, uh, getting certain criminals. 
and bringing them in. Um, he gets a really great bid, and the whole point of it is that um, a bottle of Coca-Cola, which is rare because this is like the year 20, 20, uh, it's beyond 2034 because they were talking about 2034 being in the past, but a bottle of Coca-Cola costs $75,000, which he just completed a $20,000 job and could barely even pay rent. So that gives you an idea as to inflation in the future of Shatter. Won the bid, surprisingly, but ended up somehow taking the bid away from another contractor who gets angry and follows him uh, to acquire his own bounty. So he ends up going to some old uh, factory station area, which was the only way he could get connected into another network. So there's this idea that, again, there's no consolidated internet, but there are all these various networks um, interlinked. He goes to acquire some information, do some investigation. The artwork in this, just of note, is very interesting. I can't imagine uh, the painstaking effort that Mike Sins had to go through creating this all pixel by pixel with a mouse. Um, the coloring does help, I think, in terms of creating some delineation with the line work. It'd be interesting to look at this black and white. Although sometimes the coloring doesn't really make sense either. And I'm trying to find a good example where it just, it, it just all kind of blends together and you don't really know exactly what you're looking at. But overall, especially considering, you know, the innovation of this particular comic and for those of you that know me know that I appreciate things done by hand rather than by computer. Um, but also just considering the size that he had to work with on those original monitors, it's quite a feat. It's it's an incredible book and I enjoyed reading it. Had a lot of fun. It definitely made me want to watch Blade Runner or something. Um, <laughs> and get back to my cyberpunk roots, maybe read some Neuromancer. Um, but overall, he finds the culprit of the murder, but there's like a deeper plot that starts spinning out of that, that the uh, suspect um, ends up being a fair lady who is talking to him about the crime that she committed, was actually um, to uncover some deeper plot um, of using uh, RNA transfers with humans. And... Um, Anyway, very interesting. That other contractor catches up with them. He's got a nice salad bowl on his head. Um, so you gotta love that 80s aesthetic. And she ends up getting away and he's gonna track her down. It ends with, boy, I could really do with a Coke right about now. So getting a bottle of Coke is like the big thing. <laughs> you gotta love that kind of like product. Um, idolization that that was really prevalent in the, in the 1980s uh, I think even more so than it is now um, and so this is just showing that the feature um, will begin in small backup installments in the John Sable freelance series which is done by Mike Grell who was a genius and that's about it so again yeah I mean the color is okay I think Mike Sands also did the coloring for John Sable as well so the coloring kind of blends in uh, with the two books, uh, it you know, it, it was a fun read. I enjoyed it. I don't know if I'll hunt down the rest uh, of the books, um, but I certainly had a good time, and I definitely love looking at any anything from first. So um, again, I'll I'll do some uh, deeper dives into first uh, in the near future. But there you go, Shatter, the world's first computerized comic done on the original Macintosh with a mouse. Wow. Alright, well, keep it psycho, folks.